today is to show you how to make compelling chord progressions with Cthulhu and arpeggiation progressions. And um, the general idea is to get them to tie together thematically, which is partly why I like using Cthulhu so much is because it's both a chord engine and an arpeggiation engine. And so by processing the chords through Cthulhu, you can get a consistent harmony for your song. Right, and then you can use the arpeggiation engine to gel or generate melodies and uh, chord arpeggiations and such through uh, Cthulhu that will match your harmony, right? And so it gives you, and also, um, you know, you can program the the rhythms like the general groove that you want in Cthulhu as well, and so it gives you a consistent harmonic structure for your song as well as a consistent rhythmic structure for your song um, to you know, work with or syncopate against. Right? And so it, it gives you the structure necessary to make good music. And what you're going to find if you're new to all of this is that good music is generally a balance between structure and deviations from that structure. Right? And if you don't have any structure at all, then it just seems like chaos and all of you just completely stick to your structure entirely, then it becomes really, really, really boring. Um, you know, unless you're like really into tech house or something. But I feel like they're, you know, good tech house doesn't do that or whatever. So um, let, let's get started. So basically, all we're going to be using today is Cthulhu and some random instruments. You can use anything you want pretty much, but. Um, so we're starting with this. I did another video on how to set this up, so I'm just going to do that really fast, just like set this up. So this is where Cthulhu is. We're going to grab MIDI from Cthulhu, and we're going to do this across several tracks, right? They're all going to grab MIDI from Cthulhu, right? And eventually they're going to play MIDI from the MIDI clips themselves that we are going to generate with Cthulhu. But in the meantime, they're going to be grabbing MIDI from Cthulhu, right, as MIDI or as Cthulhu spits it out. All right, so um, where I'd like to start is, uh, you know, most, so sort of the standard is for a chord to last one bar, or if it's a slower song, oftentimes it'll last like half a bar, right? So I'm going to stick in an A and then, you know, just sort of stick different chords in here. Now, if you don't know how Cthulhu works, the gist of it is... Um, and you should, you should probably watch a video that just sort of describes how it works. And maybe I'll put one of those together. This is designed to be um, more advanced use of it. Uh, but there's this chord engine and this arpeggiation engine. And so when Cthulhu gets a note, uh, we're going to leave this test tone on for a second. So we're just going to hear a sound that Cthulhu makes. All right? But when we hit play, all right, if we turn this arpeggiation engine off, you can see that we've got these green notes here, which correspond to whatever the preset of Cthulhu has attached to each of these chords, right? Right, so as it gets new notes, it's playing new chords. Now these aren't very good. Um, I'm going to use a chord preset that I made um, that ultimately I'm going to make available to you guys, but it's extremely powerful. Um, but I don't really want to explain how it works in this video. I'm going to leave that to the, the video that's focused on this preset. Um, but basically, all you need to do is find chords that you like, right? So say, you know, we like these chords, right? So say we like that, right, as our main chord progression. And it's nice, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so let's just use that, right? So one of the first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to output that in the big, long block chords, meaning just big, long chords that last that whole time. All right, so we're going to record. And now we stop recording. So now this, even if I turn off Cthulhu, this will play. Right, we now this doesn't have any instrument, so let's go ahead and tie like an organ or something to this. Dance.organ, this is probably fine. Nice. So it's nice, but it could be a little bit boring, depending. Right? So the other thing we can do is we can figure out some sort of rhythm that we want to use for our song. Right? So um, you know, if you don't know much about rhythm, 
you know, learn some, I guess. That's it's one of the most important things. But if you if you program a rhythm in down here, right, you can see that I've changed this one MIDI note into three MIDI notes, right? Listen what happens. So as instead of playing this, if we don't play this and we just receive what's coming from Cthulhu, right? So this is still pulling from Cthulhu. All right, we can take this off if you want, but uh, as we hit play, right, you can see that it's playing this rhythm. So I would duplicate this over, replace these guys. All right. All right, so now we've got these chord stabs. I would also record this. Right, pretty nice. All right, now sometimes it's boring to use the same voicing. Now the way I have this particular chord preset is that every octave is the same chord but a different voicing of that chord. Basically what that means is the notes are going to basically be the same notes but they're all going to be up an octave or down an octave or spread out more or more collapsed. So if we change all of these and move like say the middle ones you know down an octave and just move these around by octaves Right, we are going to get a whole new chord progression that is basically the same chord progression but different voicings. Right, so check this out. So we'll record this one too. Cool. Right, so we've got these chords now too. Let me just clean this up. Right, and so you can you don't have to use this chord preset that I made, obviously, um, but anything that has compatible voicings or multiple voicings of the same chord, um, you, if you don't have that, you can simply like say, okay, I like this, um, you know, this A minor chord. You could copy, right, and you could paste that up to like, you know, this a minor up here for instance right and then you could be like okay well i'm going to make a different voicing i'm going to make this one play this note and i'm also going to add like this one's going to go down here right so if we took that we could take this a voicing which is i don't know exactly which one it's going to be but we'll be able to see right so now check this right And the reason it sounded sort of weird is this this note's not actually in an A minor chord. All right, so if I do an E, it'll actually sound a little bit cleaner. Um, right, so we've already got some nice variation. We've got a little bit of rhythm built into there. We've got some different voicings, but it's the same chord progression, right? And so this is about the time when I might add a, another instrument, right? So like, so let's just say we get something that's um, nice and plucky. Cool. Nice. Right, so what I might actually do is I'll start using um, the Ableton arpeggiator if I don't want to use Cthulhu's arpeggiator. All right, so under MIDI effects, you can take this. Now, the, let's let's pay attention to what's coming in really quick. All right, so we've got this chord progression, and we can go through this in different ways. I often like to go down, one of the, the nice things about down, and I'll, I'll hit this note button, and what that does is every time it gets a new note, it's going to start the pattern over. So it's always starting from the top, so you can actually write melodies in on the top, and I'll show you that really quick. So we can go down, right, and now instead of coming in, we're just going to pull MIDI from directly from that clip, right? <laughs> So say I don't like this melody entirely. All right, say I want like this. I could put like, um, and then another one of these. Oops, wrong button. All right, so check it. Right, 
right, so you can see that the, uh, the pattern is repeating, the arpeggiation pattern that's going down from the top is repeating every single time a new note comes in. So I did that in the Ableton arpeggiator, and I just hit that note button on the lower left, right? So that's that's one of these um, oops. it's one of these hacks for creating melodies with arpeggiation, All right? So what I would do is I would take this, I would duplicate it, right, and I would make like an alternative version. So then we'd have something like this. I'm gonna drop this all an octave. Cool, so we've already got a melody line going, right? Then there's some other tricks that you can do. Like I'll oftentimes put this velocity on and I'll tell this to go towards zero and I'll pick some time that sounds good. Right, because basically it's going to start loud and it's going to decay towards zero. Uh, okay, so this is not super velocity sensitive in the first place. Um, cool. So anyways, we can combine that with what we had before. Right, and something's already starting to come together. Right. So let's just review so far. So we've been outputting the output of Cthulhu. So we have these big block chords, right? So say we want to take another instrument and take some pad. Um, let's just go like an operator pad kind of thing. Um, celestial pad sounds good. So we could call this a pad, right? This is um, chord stabs, right? And this is arp. Right, so listen, this is just these held notes. Right, and then this is the stabby notes. And this is our arpeggiation. Now, I, don't, I don't like this pad, it's, it's got a... This will be nice. So we've already got something together, you know, we could throw on some like badass beat by like Sokka or something and already like have basically, what are we at, we're at like 140. Um, I don't know if you know KJ Sokka, but everything he puts together is amazing. All right. So I'm recording and doing all this stuff. Um, so if if it's the audio is glitching out, it's because I'm kind of doing a bunch of stuff in the background, like screen capture and whatnot. And I'm I'm, I'm running through um, not the best audio drivers. Ozio for all is better, or like my my complete ultimate would be better, but I just didn't set that up. And the screen capture doesn't work with Ozio. All right, so we've got we've got a start here, right? We've got these chords. Another thing that I like to do is. Um, in Cthulhu, there's there's this chord button that's on the arpeggiation engine. If you hit that, instead of playing one note, it's going to play a whole chord. And it's going to play a chord based off of what's going through it. So we could, we could do it this way, and let's just um, hear how that sounds really quick. So I'm going to pull from this guy. So if I hit record, it's still pulling from Cthulhu. So as long as that's going, all right, we'll get audio or... MIDI coming from the Let's turn this off. And this. Interesting. Um, so what I'll often do is I'll often put in like a rhythm that I want here. All right, so right now we're doing in eighth notes, we are doing a 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm. All right, so that is here, here. All right, and again here. So what this one means is it's taking the lowest note of the chord, 
that's coming from the chord engine on the bottom. So that would be this note, and it's building a chord above it, right? So we can make inversions if we change these from one to say like three, right? and so we could like make different chord patterns, like, right? And um, sometimes we want them to be longer. So if you hold Control, I believe it's no. So if you hold Alt, see these arrows that appear at the top. This is basically saying, hey, hold this note the whole, you know, through to the next step in the arpeggiation, in the arp, like in the sequencer. All right. So now we've still got this arp on. So actually, let's just um, record into the stabby chord one instead. All right. So you'll notice this is what's coming out. Um, all right. So if we were to go here. So we can put in the chord stabs themselves and all these different inversions this way. All right, so I'll, I'll often make um, chords that way and I'll, I'll record them this way, right? So I would you know hit the record button and give one option of stabby chords. But sometimes I'll also want like something that's a little bit faster. All right, so this is going to be like 16th note stabs, right? And we can still do this trick with inverting them, right? So if we kind of draw this in, right, and get some more variation. Right, we get something, and it's, it seems like a little chaotic, and it doesn't seem like it has that much of a groove to it. Right, so this we're going to get into the other two most important sections for creating groove through Cthulhu. Right, the first one is velocity scaling. Right, so we don't want to give up that 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm that we have. Now we're in 16th notes, so that's going to turn into more of like a 6-6-4. Six, six, right, so we want to accent those notes. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then four. All right, so already you're gonna hear, right? And we can pull these down to sort of like make those more ghost notes, and we can add a little bit of a groove here. Like say this swoops down and it comes upwards, and then this one we're actually gonna, The other thing that we can do to accentuate the groove is use the gate, right? So we could have our, our main notes be longer, right? And shorten all these other notes, right? So six, six, four, right? Sometimes it's nice to get like a little bit of movement in these. So we're already starting to get something really interesting going on. All right, so let's record this. All right, so we've got, um, all right, and so you can see this. Notice we've got long notes and we've got short notes, right? And so if we start playing from here as opposed to recording what's coming in, now it's right, just playing from this MIDI clip. You can see that. Right, so we've accentuated that groove that we initially started off with, that da, 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 right, that 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm. We've been accentuating that even though we're doing in these big pulsing 16ths. Right, we could make another version that actually moves in eighths, right, but is similarly happens every single eighth, right, Remember, I just sort of draw the, drew these in, and we could like fine tune each of these things, and that's what I really recommend doing is figuring out what works best, just sort of by your ear, right? But use the velocity scaling. Now we're back to this three, three, two, right? Um, no, that was four. So three, three, two, and if you want, you can actually shorten these loop lengths. Why aren't you shortening? There we go. Right, so you can shorten these loop lengths. Um, if you want, these are all independent unless you click this link lengths here, right? So if we're just trying to accent that, but maybe, um, right, so three, three, two, right? We can actually, maybe we do like a different one of this one where it's like still three, three, two, but then we're gonna hit like both of these and this one's just gonna be a little bit longer, 
All right, so uh, let's hit record so that we're recording in. We don't need to listen to this. Make sure this is playing. All right, so we don't. That's nice. So I'm actually gonna I'm gonna record that because I don't want to lose that just because it's kind of cool. So you notice I, I changed that just at the last minute so that we get sort of a variation down here. Right, but if we have this chord button, we can also make that a chord stab, right? All right. All right, so um, there you go. So now you can see that we've got uh, down here we've got this MIDI pumping away at this 3-3-2 rhythm. We've got the length also pumping at 3-3-2 rhythm to really sort of help accentuate um, that, that, that underlying groove that we have. And so already you'll notice we've produced a lot of MIDI that is harmonically and rhythmically compatible uh, you know, with one giant theme. Right? So we've got all these different chord stabs. Right? We could even like... Um, fix this audio glitching for the next video. Um, but you get the point, right? So what we've done is we've used just one instance of Cthulhu, right? We sort of built one chord progression. Now, you'll notice these are all A's, right? A, A, A. Uh, that's because of the way I have this Lynx Chordex set up. It's basically each octave is a different voicing of the same chord, right? But uh, even if you have some random ones, like the ones that come with Cthulhu, these chorales, Right, you can just as easily. Um, oh, that, that's the arpeggiation. Right, so if you use these Bach chorales, you can just scroll through and you can sort of set up rhythms like underlying rhythms in here if you like, uh, and change each one. So each time the rhythm hits, it's like a slightly different voicing. That's going to give you some uh, good um, variation in your chords. So it's not just like the same chord hitting you constantly, constantly, constantly. Right. And then, um, you know, once you get block chords like that, you can set up and just get these stabby chords, right? This is those inversions, right? Then uh, from there we started, you know, we, we did the trick with arpeggiating this stuff, right? So this guy's using the Ableton arpeggiator. We could have done that in Cthulhu, but honestly, sometimes it's nicer to work with the Ableton arpeggiator. I really like this note trigger. Uh, feature to be able to like generate new melodies that way. Um, really quick, say we want to capture that MIDI because this is a, this is an important thing, right? Is to make sure that you have the actual MIDI that you're hearing, right? So that you can edit it and make little like one-off changes that wouldn't be easy to do in an arpeggiator. So if we pull the MIDI from the ARP, right? Then we can record that, and so it'll take. So now we could hypothetically run this without the arpeggiator, right? And then we still get the same, uh, the same pattern. And then the reason we would really want to do that is, um, you know, say, okay, it's nice, but I, maybe I want this to, right? Maybe I want this to go up. That's like now an option for me. Off fold so I can see these notes. Then I'm going to put all this an octave down. We'll just solo this. All right, so you can build in new melodies there and just edit the MIDI because now you have it as MIDI as opposed to um, 
you know just what's in here but you'll you'll remember that I also actually put in MIDI notes here so you can do that as well because if you have that note trigger on then every time it gets a new note like now 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 right it's going to start that pattern over from the top and the top note is the melody note right the rest is just sort of mostly going to blend into the harmony right so people are going to be tracking that top line and so you can program in a custom top line even though you have all these chords under here right so you've got all this stuff under here and uh, that will still reinforce the harmony and you can have the MIDI at the top and so this is really really nice because even if we were to have a section where it doesn't have you know this patty chord and it doesn't have these chord stabs this is sufficient to hold down the harmony by itself right because it's track tracking through all those notes so it still gives this nice harmonic foundation um, even though it's it's technically melodic in a real way. Cool. Well, thank you very much, guys. I think that's all I have. Um, leave questions in the comments below. Uh, if you have requests for any kind of videos, I'm probably going to do maybe one or two more on Cthulhu, then I'm going to start moving into other stuff. I've got ones planned on um, orchestral arrangement and making like badass you know beats for hip hop and EDM and uh, I'm just the list goes on and on so check it out check out my original music uh, my name is missing links and uh, we'll see you